We have studied in details about cells, their structure and function, their types in the last sessions. Now we focus on introductory study of microorganisms. As the term suggests, microorganisms is used to describe organisms that are microscopic in size. Large populations of microorganisms are present in our surroundings in air, water, soil, etc. However, due to their extremely small size, these are invisible to the naked eye. Though we commonly observe the effects of their activities very easily in our surroundings. When we suffer from certain infections like fever, cough and cold, stomach upset and diarrhea etc. We know that it is because disease causing microorganisms. When we observe foodstuffs like bread, vegetables and fruits being spoiled, it is due to the action of microorganisms growing on them. The knowledge of their activities also enables us to use them in a controlled manner for our benefit. For example, during preparation of breads, idlis, curd, yogurt, cheese, wine, etc., we use the process of fermentation which is brought about by microbes. We also use them for obtaining commercially important products like vaccines, antibiotics, vitamins, organic acids, pesticides, etc. We use them to resolve environmental problems of pollution and garbage disposal by employing them in the process of composting, biogas preparation, bioremediation, etc. As you progress to the next class, you are going to study all these aspects in greater details. Now let us make an effort to develop basic understanding of these tiny living beings that are present all around us in large numbers. Microorganisms show a lot of diversity in their structure and form. Many are unicellular while many more are multicellular. Unicellular microbes may have prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell structure. Some microbes occur individually or singly in large populations or they may form large colonies that easily visible to a naked eye. Some microorganisms can use solar energy or sunlight and inorganic substances to derive nutrition and energy and are thus autotrophic and photosynthetic. Many microbes derive nutrition and energy from organic substances and have heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Hence, it is easier to study about them by classifying them into specific groups of microorganisms having similar properties. The branch of biology that deals with detailed study of microorganisms is termed as microbiology. Microorganisms that are present around us may belong to either one of the following categories. Bacteria, protist, fungi, algae. There is one more unique category of microscopic entities that need to be mentioned separately at this point, the viruses. These are microscopic acellular entities which are capable of producing more copies of themselves only after infecting living cells. Their detailed study is termed as virology. We will focus on understanding certain basic features of microbes belonging to only the first four groups mentioned previously during this session. Bacteria. This group includes the most primitive cells that came into existence as life evolved on this planet. All the microorganisms in this group are unicellular meaning the entire body of the organism is made up of only one cell. All bacteria also have prokaryotic cell structure. Being single celled prokaryotes, bacteria are the simplest life forms on this planet. They occur in soil, air, water. In Whittaker's five kingdom classification system, they belong to kingdom Monera. They exhibit variety of shapes such as spherical cells termed as cocci, rod-like termed as bacilli, spiral, etc. The bacterial cells may occur singly or in small clusters or chains as illustrated in these pictures. Protist. This group also comprises of unicellular microbes but they differ from previous group because all microorganisms in this group have eukaryotic cell structure. So, they are simply called unicellular eukaryotes. They usually occur in all types of water bodies like seas, rivers, lakes, wells, etc. or moist soil. They follow mostly heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Few protists have cells with chloroplasts and are photosynthetic. Protists belong to Kingdom Protista according to Whittaker's Five Kingdom classification system. Some examples of protists are shown in the picture. Fungi. Microorganisms belonging to this group are all eukaryotes. 
most of the fungi are multicellular while some are unicellular they occur and grow easily in damp places containing rich organic matter like moist or wet logs of wood tree barks soil rich in dead decaying matter overripe fruits and vegetables dead animals bodies etc all fungi are heterotrophic and have saprophytic mode of nutrition fungi belong to kingdom fungi according to whitaker's five kingdom classification system yeasts are the most common fungi which are used extensively in preparation variety of baked foods and brewing mold fungi are usually responsible for food spoilage while mushrooms varieties of which we use as food are also fungi algae this group includes eukaryotic microorganisms which are mostly multicellular though few are unicellular they have aquatic habitat and occur in both freshwater and saltwater bodies some multicellular form large masses of growth and can be seen as floating less like or freely sheets in lakes and oceans all algae are photosynthetic algae belong to kingdom plantae according to whitaker's five kingdom classification system though some are now also classified as belonging to kingdom protista some examples of algae are depicted in this picture you will be studying all these groups of microorganisms in greater details during next academic year so do not forget this basic information about them let us quickly summarize this session one we have covered meaning of the term microorganism two we have studied the occurrence and significance of microorganisms three we have studied some basic properties of microorganisms four we have also covered basic features of four different types of microorganisms that are bacteria protists fungi algae